Okay. This is going to be a very fast video. I just wanted to make a tiny update to show you. I basically forgot about these cheeses. We went up north to Erica's cabin, and when I came back, the cheese were nice and shriveled. And there's also a couple of uh, green spots, which is not a problem for me. What you can do is just scrape that off if you don't want it there. Now this would have been wrapped in my refrigerator, but like I said, I was out of town and I did not get a chance to do it. I'm just gonna shake this off. These were the papers that I had under them and you can see the stain, that's where the water was being pulled out. So what you can do is just give your cheese a coat of olive oil and a drop of white vinegar and you could just coat your cheese you can see that it made a nice skin now this had a lot of mushroom powder in it so it got a little dark but that's okay We're gonna cut this cheese and see what it looks like inside. Okay. Now this is a cheese that we made out of tofu. It's very inexpensive to make. And look how beautiful this cheese is. Oh, nice and strong really really nice and we're gonna give this a little go and taste it and nice and firm now if you don't like the darkness of the cheese you can simply remove that if you want but all that really is is the skin mm, my god this is good mm, really strong Mm -mm. delicious nice strong cheese this will go great with a bottle of wine really really nice mm. really really nice and there you go you've got cheese delicious cheese if you make this one exactly how I showed you it has a very strong Oh, what was that cheese called that I used to buy all the time? It wasn't Parmesan. My God, it's so long that I bought cheese. I don't even remember some of their names. It was um, like a provolone almost, like a strong provolone cheese. Delicious. When I say this is delicious, this is delicious. Now, I have the other one that I'm going to crack open, obviously, for Christmas, but when you make this, if you make a lot of it, this was just a small example to show you. But when you make this, if uh, you make a lot of it, what you can do once it's dry, You would need maybe an old pot that you can use because you want to be able to have a smallish pot it would have to be a smallish pot so when you melt it I'll show you how I would melt this how I would dip it but you want to have it in a smaller pot that when you melt this wax it's going to be nice and high that you grab your cheese like this you could actually use only one side if you want like this and you're gonna dip it into the wax and let it set dip let it set and when it's all firm you will pull out your skewer and then just dip on the side where you pierce it 
and it's going to encase your cheese. And then you're going to be able to keep this cheese there for years. Once that cheese is dipped in the wax, you're good to go. So if you make quite a bit of cheese, like if you double this or triple this, uh, you could actually wax your cheese and you'll have it in the refrigerator in its own little wax and it's going to stay just the way you see it now. It won't get drier than that. So this cheese is going to go in our belly. And don't be afraid of the dark skin. That's not a problem at all. If you don't want to see the dark skin, you could powder this again. But if you powder it, it's going to be hard for you to give it a good wax. So I say not to powder it. If you see little bits of green, uh, don't be afraid of it. Just scrape it off and then you can dip your uh, you can dip your cheese. But it is so good. Or put it away. If you don't want to wax it, I say wrap it up. But there it is. Almost like a provolone, I would say, taste-wise. Big difference between the one that I made prior to this one. That one tastes more like a Parmesan. This one has a provolone taste. Really, really good. So I will name this one provolone from now on because that's what it tastes like. Delicious. Cheese wax. Hard to work with this crazy thumb of mine. There we go. That's what it looks like. So I'm going to show you the pot I use. Ooh, a little hot. This is the pot I use. So you want to be able to have a pot that you can always use. So you're going to leave whatever wax is left for your next cheese. And it also makes it great if you're going to give them as gifts. But it still has to be refrigerated, guys. Perfect. And another thing I do not to waste, uh, I have paper towels that I have under and then on top of the cheese. Let me just zoom out a bit. A little in your face, I think. Okay. So I have paper that I have on top and at the bottom. And when it gets wet, I just put it aside. They dry up and I use new paper and then... Uh, that's it. I don't need to get any more paper. I just keep using these ones. Once the wet ones are wet, I put them aside, pull out the ones that went to dry, and I use this. Goes back one under, one on top, and day after, I check when they're wet, put these to dry, get the other ones that are drying, and I don't use more than a couple of sheets of paper towels. Okay. 
Now you could cut these in, like if you make big discs, you could either wax it completely or you could cut it in four and do individual waxing. So if somebody wants a piece of cheese, the other stuff, like for instance, if I take this cheese now and I cut it in four, I wax them individual. So when you want a piece of cheese, you just take one piece. The other ones are completely waxed and it's perfect that you don't... Uh, it's not that you expose the cheese to the air, so they last longer. So there's many ways of waxing your cheese. Especially if you're making it at home, you don't really make a huge amount of cheese. So by doing that, uh, you're able to take a piece when you want to eat it, and the rest stays nice and encased in the wax. Okay, I am turning off my wax. Wait till this cools off a bit. So, for instance, if I want to wax this piece, I could just dim, dip it. Wait till it cools off and then you could redip it. But you want to give it a nice thick wax. I mean, it's not going to be a professional job, right? But the whole point is that you get your cheese waxed. Now, I don't know if you've ever bought cheese with wax. Uh, you could put a little piece of paper here so it's easier for you to peel it. Or you just cut it, cut into your cheese. Okay, just put it aside, let that cool off. I am not going to do that one because we will be eating that one. Okay, I will be trying to remove this one though from my pot. Let's see. In you go. And then we reverse it. Let it cool off. In you go. The wax is hot, but not hot. If I get some on my fingers, it's not so bad. Okay, put this upside down. This way, that side cools off, whatever wax you have you could dump it in this one can be handled so I will remove and dip that side oh, I got some cheese crumbs and that's how simple it is to wax your cheese now 
you like I said if you cut that in four you'll be getting sections like this easier for you to grab a piece of cheese and not let the rest of the cheese be exposed so I think that's a great idea to do it that way for now there is this one completely covered that one we're gonna eat this one I'm gonna take and dip the other side you could also use skewers to guide you there we go flip it over the wax stays nice and melted for a while so I'm gonna say I love you guys I'm gonna continue waxing my cheese and guess what I'll see you in my next video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and put a like on this video if you like to see videos like this I have a lot of other cheese that I make that I want to share with you but for now I'm gonna say I love you and guess what guys I'll see you in my next video Yes. Please. You want it cut in half? Uh, like a gift. That's good. Thank you. This is looking so nice. It's so nice. Yeah.